I'm pleased to be able to welcome you to this third annual Princeton Fung Global Forum. Recent viral outbreaks, Ebola, avian flu, and the respiratory syndromes known as SARS and MERS have presented the world with a formidable quandary. Can we learn something useful? I mean, this is now the 10th or 15th outbreak of an emerging infection in the last 30, 40 years. And we don't seem to be willing to learn anything. I'd like to get insights into the question of are plagues inevitable? Epidemics are inevitable. And as somebody once said, pandemics are optional. But we're really focusing on uh, past epidemics and how they inform our understanding of how uh, uh, Ebola plays out and how public health should respond in the future. It's not a virus. What was it then? And I call this the perfect storm. It's a combination of um, a number of um, environmental, of political factors, of infrastructure, of beliefs that created this perfect storm. During Ebola, some of the fundamentals that were wrong with the system were quite exposed. The health workforce, the issues of pay, motivation, training, supervision was in disarray. Different programs would come, the immunization program would come and focus on those health workers doing immunization. Uh, Global Fund that was focusing on um, AIDS, malaria and TB would do the same. And that was found to be completely a wrong approach. Too siloed. Yeah, yeah, too siloed. And as soon as there was a big shock, the system collapsed. When an epidemic hits, the behavioral response is so important and makes it a different epidemic depending on people's behaviors. Two point seven workers per thousand people doesn't tell you whether those thousand people are clustered in one village or in twenty villages. And if they're in twenty villages, your costs change. You know, public health physicians like myself can't understand that problem, but economists can, policymakers can, demographers can, geographers can. And it goes beyond health, the kind of data we need about these blind spots. We have to think about economics in parallel and, and, and politics in parallel with all the epidemiology and the molecular biology. Numbers can be very reassuring, but they can also engender fear. So we really understand a, a lot of epidemiology based on numbers. There's a hope that we can somehow use this data to help us better understand what's happening right now, and that could be useful for surveillance, and that could also potentially be useful for response. I think anthropologists and social scientists were the least surprised when there was resistance, violence, mistrust on the ground. Epidemics um, sort of sow the seeds of and tear apart really um, foundational social institutions. As an anthropologist, I needed to understand it from the ground. How can communications technologies help if the messages are not trusted? The color of body bag matters. It took the international community, weeks and months to realize that black color body bag does not work. It has to be white. One of the things that we worked on with the anthropologists was developing family trees for the affected households. The families themselves loved seeing this written down, sort of their, their own genealogy, their family history. So it was an absolute synergy and it is something that, that I would not want to be without in the future. So, so, so rather than then seeing culture or social practices as the problem, it might be carrying um, deeper understandings of things that have to be accounted for, you know, and they cannot be easily bypassed or be transformed into a, a key to a, you know, to a cultural essence or truth that, that then technicians can address. What are the lessons learned as we think about the future? How do we set in place uh, better systems? And, and what have we learned from this crisis? If you make sure that you keep the patient, and I would argue the community as well, at the heart of everything you do, you will not go far wrong. And I think we've missed that during the last 
14 years and during every epidemic. You know, one thing we've learned, the Ebola epidemic is not going to be over when the last person dies. There's still going to be a, a legacy. You can't take parts of well-being by themselves and that you can't talk about fixing health if people are starving. You can't talk about fixing children if the politics is so bad that you're living in a dictatorship. I think we must learn at least one important lesson, which is that we have to be more rights-based in our health work. We have to understand that the more we empower communities themselves, the more we work with communities and strengthen them, um, the more uh, we can avoid at least some um, of the problems. Unless we bring yesterday's call for epidemiologists, clinicians, public health people, but also anthropologists, social scientists, people that understand how societies operate, and that that is the 21st century public health, then I think we won't be able to respond in future to the sorts of challenges we, we, we face. We are not defined by the pandemics or the crises that strike our lives, we are defined by how we respond.